So boys and girls, thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Bye! Hi boys and girls, I'm here because I dare to be a dad. It is a privilege for me to be the father of two boys, Caleb James and Dominic Joshua. And did you know, boys and girls, that the Bible speaks about fatherly love and the importance of loving your children? Yes, that is why the Bible says in John 15 verse 9, As the Father loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I want to let you know, boys and girls, that your father loves you, and they too dare to be a dad. I pray that as we go through today, we will remember the love of our fathers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and great God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be co-laborers with you. And today, we are recognizing fathers and the love of our fathers. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to bless our fathers, those who are standing up for their children and doing their best for them. Cover every single boy and girl that is watching today and that, dear God, they will see the love of Jesus through their fathers. Thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At 9.30 a.m., invite all your friends to see J.C. Joel's. So long, little ones. Bye. review of the adult Sabbath school lesson. God has been good to us. We have been studying some wonderful lessons. This morning, the theme is worship that never ends. My two panelists are Elder Clayton Nelson, who attends the Portmore Seventh Adventist Church, and Elder Anthony Johnson, who attends the Greater Portmore Church. Welcome, gentlemen. We are delighted to have you. Just before we go any further, I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Elder Johnson, can you be so kind as to pray for us? Great God, we give you thanks for your goodness. We give you thanks for your word that we must live by. We ask you, O Holy Father, as we review your words, that your spirit will pervade every heart and may each one get what is meaningful for their experience. We pray to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Elder Nelson, please read the memory text for us. Psalm 114, 104 rather, verse 33. The psalmist says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Amen. 
So as we look at this lesson, we recognize that as our experience of God's grace and power increases, we are prompted to ask the question like the psalmist, what shall I render to the Lord for all his goodness, all his grace, all his blessings towards us? The simple answer, gentlemen, is we need to devote our lives to God because he has been good. Elder Johnson, what is your take on the whole matter of worship? What would you define worship as? Well, the scripture, the, the wise man in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes rather, 13, tell us that the entire conclusion, our existence is to fear God and give him glory. Therefore, as we look at worship, Worship, we worship God for two basic reasons. One, because of his greatness. And two, our response to that greatness. Therefore, we will discover as we go along, Pastor, that worship is a total life experience Amen. to the goodness of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Elder Nelson, what's your take on the whole matter of worship? What does worship entail for you? For me, worship means that whatever I do, whatever I say, is to give honor and glory to God. It means it is a lifestyle of giving praises and honor and glory and obedience to God. It means an entire, what's the word I'm looking for? Self-sacrificing to God. Therefore, when we come to worship, it is not just to lift up holy hands in, this, in the sanctuary, but it is a lifestyle given over to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I, I like those two comments. Worship, Elder Nelson, based on my notes, a life lived bowing down. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So worship is not just waving hands and saying glory hallelujah worship is a lifestyle but you know gentlemen i've heard people say that the church is boring they came to church last week sabbath not not here under this tent but for example they went to a particular church and they said oh church was boring can church be boring church my brothers and sisters cannot be boring go ahead elder no it it, it this week would have brought to our mind exactly what it is that you bring um, to the congregation as we meet in corporate worship. Pastor, if you have no closet experience throughout the week and you are just coming to get, you might turn up one day and there is not much for you to get. But if you, throughout the week, have been anchored and connected in Jesus Christ. Then when you meet at the place where God designed for his people to meet, and you have something to share, and your heart is open because when you share, you will have less than you brought, so that you have place for the other of God's saints to give to you. So it's a two-way street. So in that way, worship is going to be impactful and it will never be a boredom experience. Amen. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, I've heard people say, church, boring. Yeah. Church cannot be boring. We are the ones who are boring. That's right. When you come into the presence of God, just a while ago I was around the back with these men and we were meditating and I, we sat and listened to those children who were singing I want to make heaven my home the joy that flooded our souls when I listened to the testimony of that lady who, who, who spoke about God's goodness I can't help but just say praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So, so when you come into God's presence there can be no form of boredom because Brother Daniel, God's presence, Sister Lisseth, God's presence brings liveliness. And if you find yourself as a Christian, you are just going through the motions and you're just bored and you will just drag yourself. And boy, if I catch a catch, something is wrong. You must come with an attitude. Bring to the worship 
and you will get a blessing. Amen. Go ahead, Elder Nelson. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are what? Pleasures. Pleasures forevermore. So when we come into the presence of God, the very presence of God gives life. Yes. Therefore, service would not be boring, Sister Barrett. Service turn up to the point where we start to burn up under the tent. Have Amen, mercy. somebody? And because of God's very presence in this place, worship can never and will never be boring. Amen. He used that word, not me. <laughs> Amen. But, but Elder Nelson, well said. So, so let's go now, Sister Carleen. We're looking at singing to the Lord a new song. What does a new song in this context mean? Singing Elder Roxwell Lawrence, Sister Shalane, what does singing a new song mean? Gentlemen. Okay, uh, according to Psalm 33 and verse 3, Psalm 40 and verse 3, Psalm 96 and, and verse 1, the psalm is encourage individual to sing a new song. And in this context, a new song is talking about our experience. Amen. And, Amen. and so each time, even as we go over the same thing, la last year when we talk about the Lord is my shepherd. But when there is nothing around, you can repeat the Lord as your shepherd with a new experience because every day with Jesus, as the Negro spiritual says, is sweeter than the day before. Amen. So it's an experience live with him when we talk about a new song. Amen. Amen. Well said. Elder Nelson, chime in, please. Singing a new song unto the Lord. As Elder Johnson says, each day should be sweeter than the day before. And from my own personal experience with God, I can safely say without a doubt that the God who saved me is still around to save me. This morning, he woke me up and planted my feet on the rock to stay. And the rock is who? Christ Jesus himself. Therefore, as a people, God's people, we are to sing a new song. Every day we must have a new song. Amen? Every day. And because of that, others may come, taste and see how good our God is. Amen. A new song, Elder Nelson, Elder Johnson, speaks to a recognition, Elder Lawrence, of God's awesome majesty and goodness. Now, there are some persons who only have one testimony, and there are some members in the church who may be annoyed. For example, a brother might just get up and say, praise God, God is good. And somebody might be saying, every time I hear him, it's the same thing. Yes. But that is his experience. Yes. It's, it's like the man, you know, who went to the doctor. His son took him to the doctor. He was not feeling well. And he shouted out, hallelujah. So, so the, the, the son was wondering, what in God's heaven, what was there for him to be saying hallelujah for? He said to his dad, dad, he said to his son rather, son, I read in the National Geographic Explorer that when God forgives, or yes, when God forgives, he throws your sins to the depths of the sea. And the sin is so deep, the sea is so deep that when God throws away my sin, nobody can find it. So he took him out from that spot and he placed him in a naughty corner. And he said, man, you have nothing to shout about this time. The man looked through the window again and he said, praise the Lord. Yes. So, so the, 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 the son was annoyed. What in God's heaven could you be saying hallelujah, praise God for? He said, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. And the permanent truth is on the work. Amen. The, the, the point of the matter, my brothers and sisters, anywhere you are, you can find something to worship God for. Amen. And let no one steal your testimony. If you only can get up at Wednesday night meeting and say, praise God. The old time thing we used to say, Papa Jesus, good. If that's the only thing you can say, lift your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Because God is good and worthy to be praised. Yeah. Gentlemen, we're running quickly now. So let me run quickly. I'm getting excited as you can see. Up here is hot, but I'm getting so excited. So Amen. let me try to run now. Who may abide in God's tabernacle? What does the term tabernacle mean? Is a tabernacle the physical structure? 
Does the tabernacle characterize the, the physical building? The, the, the church, the, the, the church or the sanctuary is a congregation where God meets with his people corporately. But this tabernacle can be a humble place. It can be a grand place. But it must be your best effort to meet with God as best as your circumstances. Amen. Kind of Elder Nelson. The servant of the Lord says that wherever we call upon the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that becomes holy ground. So it doesn't matter where. It could be at the top of a coconut tree. That is the tabernacle of God. Amen. Amen, somebody? Amen. Because God says through Christ, wherever two or three are gathered, he's in the midst and he's here to bless. Amen? Therefore, as a result of that, we, once we put aside self and sin, we can abide in the sanctuary of God because we are, God is, that is his sanctuary. Amen. Gentlemen, we have to wrap. But there are a few things, Elder Johnson, Elder Nelson, that I'd like to leave with our congregation. Number one, do not gossip about others. Amen. As God's people, we belong to the tabernacle of God. And when Amen. people come to you with nice, juicy gossip about Elder Johnson, say, ask a question. Did you speak to Elder Johnson about it? If they say no, tell them to go and talk to him, as Matthew 18 says. We must love one another, speak well of each other before their faces and behind their backs. Too often we are too quick to tear down and criticize each other. God's people who are a part of the tabernacle, who worship and love God, must love one another. Amen. We sing that we are marching to Zion. If we don't love each other, we can't march to Zion. We are marching to the kingdom of hell. So gentlemen, as we wrap, let us remember that we are all God's people. We belong to the tabernacle of God. And worship is a verb. Worship, Elder Johnson, is an action. And Elder Nelson, give me your final, final take on this. One sentence, one sentence, and I'm done. In God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And once we come into his presence, we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we leave from his presence, we, are going, we need to go and tell others that there's a God who is to be served and that there's a heaven to win and a hell to shun. Amen. God bless you. Psalm 50 and verse 6, the psalmist says, Let everything that hath bread praise the Lord. Psalms 46 and verse 17 says, Thy people shall praise thy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you for having been with us today. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Because when we study, we are brought closer to Jesus. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Loving God and our Father, we thank you for the wonderful lesson that we just reviewed. We thank you, Lord, that you have made us to worship you. May we worship you in spirit and in truth. May our worship be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Stacy, Sister Baru, Jesus is planning a great homecoming soon. Oh, and yes. guess what? By the grace of God, I'm going to be there. Oh, yes, church. Are you desirous of being in that grand, grand, great uh, getting up morning, as, as I want to refer to it? That's right. Brethren, you are all invited. Will you join us on that great day when the Lord shall come to take his people home? Amen. Indeed. As the songwriter says, what a day. Come on, church, help me. That will be when my Jesus, come on, somebody, I, I shall, shall see. see when I look upon his face. Come on, what? church, help me. The one who saves me by, by his, his grace. grace. Amen. Indeed, indeed. Amen. And to bless our hearts with a reminder that speaks to that is a songstress. Her name is Sister Nordica. 
Russell. She'll be blessing us with an item in song, Sister Baru, indeed. Listen carefully, brethren. We are going home soon. Amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve to bless us with the various gifts to be used for His honor. I'm just going to ask you to listen to the following instruction before we have a very important baby dedication. For those who have bags on the seats and you are not using the seats, we have a lot of persons who would like to be seated. We're going to ask for you to work with the ushers. They will be coming to you. We have persons who are senior citizens. We're going to ask the gentlemen the Seventh-day Adventist men, to ensure that the females are seated, especially our elderly. So please work with us because we want to make sure that we 
care for those who are elderly and all our females are seated. So the ushers will be coming to you to remove those bags that you have on your chairs so that we can have everyone seated. I'm going to be inviting at this time um, the families and those who are here for this special baby dedication to join me right here at the platform. Uh, Mother Melisha Ring, Father Leonard Edwards, and those who are here to support them in this baby, baby dedication service to join me at this time. Let us sing Jesus Loves the Little Children while we await for the family members and those who are here to come forward. Let us sing together Jesus Loves the Little Children. Happy for Melissa Ring. She has her two little ones that she has brought to be dedicated to the Lord. Lenny Jr. Edwards and Elijah Augustus Edwards. And so today as you bring these little ones to be dedicated to the Lord, I want to share with you from the book of Psalm 127 and verse 3, where the Bible says, Children are an heritage to the Lord and the fruit of his womb is his reward. Today, as you bring these little ones to be dedicated to God, I want you to first know that they belong to God. These little ones belong to God. He is the rightful owner, and you have been entrusted to train them in the fear and admonition of God. It is therefore very important that as a mother that you first ensure that you have a true knowledge of God, that you spend time to know God so that you can pass on to these little ones a true knowledge of God. It is your duty as a mother to ensure that the training that you give them is one by precept and example, meaning that you must not only instruct them in what is right, they must see that in your own life as well. And as you train them for God, you must teach them how to be respectful, to be respectful of those who are above them, to be respectful to society, and to be obedient to the laws of, the, of your home. As you train them to be obedient to God's laws, today you are ensuring that they will grow up with values and principles and be responsible citizens in Jamaica. And if this is your commitment today to dedicate them to the Lord, I'm going to ask that you respond to the following questions then I'm going to be asking you by saying I do. Do you pledge to train these little children in the fear and admonition of God? Do you recognize that they are gifts from God and is it your commitment to use the church, use the school, the church, and any means available to you that they may love Jesus Christ? Amen, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we have a special prayer for the family at this time, dedicating these little ones to the Lord. Amen. 
Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. You have blessed militia, militia, and you have blessed them with these little ones, Elisha and Lenny. We pray that you will grow, they will be trained in the fear of God. We pray that you'll put a hedge around these little ones, that they will grow to love Jesus and his word. We pray that you'll provide for all their needs so that they will lack nothing and they will come to know God who is their provider and learn to love him because of the exemplary life of mother and father. We pray that this will be a home, a little heaven on earth, where the name of Jesus Christ is spoken frequently. And we pray in a very special way, O oh God, that as these children grow older and reach the age of consent where they can give their lives to Jesus, that they will make this request and become a part of the church. And therefore, we'll be fit candidates for the kingdom of heaven. We pray that you'll bless the parents financially. And we pray that you'll bless them, that they will send them to the right school, a school that will ensure that the very teachings that they will be taught at the school will be the same that are taught at the home. So bless them, O oh God, be with them. And we pray that when you shall come, that these little ones along with the parents will have a part in your kingdom when you shall come for them. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, God bless you. We have a very special certificate that we will be giving you at the appropriate time. God bless you and please ensure that you continue growing them in the fear of God. God bless.
the church say? Amen. Let the church say? Amen. Oh, in that beautiful city, the city of God, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It's always a favorite, always a favorite. Praise the Lord. And we are having a mini Jerusalem experience down here. Amen. Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series. It's warm here under our triple... Tent. Triple tent. <laughs> and it's warm online. Yes, it's warm yes. online. What we an have... awesome Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it, Daniel. Well, we have over 2,000 persons all across the world who are viewing us on our various platforms. So whether you're watching us on NCU TV, Bless TV, on our YouTube channel, we have 2,000 persons. And of course, persons are viewing us on platforms of various churches across the conference. So, you know, the Evangelistic Series is a big deal. Praise the Lord. And let us talk about what is happening right under the tent, Municipal Boulevard, Portmore. If you have a seat beside you, could you just raise your hand? Amen. I see some hands going up. The ushers are taking note. Also, the worship experience continues. It's, it's not just a Sabbath day. I want to remind you that tomorrow at 9.30 we will be having your health and you. That following is also growing. Daniel, I know you have a list of favorite topics. Yes, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a recap of some of the topics that I'm sure you all enjoyed this week. On Sunday, we had Design to Deceive. Mm -hmm. On Monday, we had Beast Hunting. On Tuesday, we explored The Creditors Are Coming. On Wednesday, Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And last night, a very plain, practical message. Yes. Is it okay to be gay? Hmm. Is no. it okay? Oh. Not at oh. all, not at all. And what are we going to talk about today? I'm excited. No, we're not better than Yard. I love it. Although we haven't heard the sermon yet. <laughs> yes, yes. And today we are going to have our baptismal service after the sermon. So, you know, just get, get comfortable and enjoy the rest of the service. Praise the Lord. You know, Daniel, I'm remembering now that the woman at the well got so excited, she ran away and left her water pot. No, somebody last night got so excited after that sermon. Right? They ran away and left their phone charger. Yes, if, you, <laughs> if that was you, yes, you can speak with us. So now, we're going into divine service. Yes, or divine service. Praise the Lord. And who is going to be praying for us? I think that will Dr. be... Dr. Kemar Douglas, Amen. Health Ministries Director at CJC. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful that you've allowed us to enjoy the blessings of your Sabbath. We pray that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, that your Holy Spirit will indeed touch our hearts and our lives. We come with various circumstances and issues and problems. We know that those who are watching online, they too have their various prayer requests, just as those who are underneath this Candle Cathedral. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you know our needs, you know our wants, you know where we are. You understand immensely what is there in our lives. But you have promised that you will do according to your riches in glory. So we respect and honor you, knowing that sometimes what we want may not be best for us, but what you want will always be best for us. So into your hands we commit every single individual here and those who are watching online, and those who are viewing in their churches across the, the great vast of this earth. We ask that once again that your blessing will come down and fill our souls as we bless you and give our lives to you. For those of us who are already a part of the family of God, we pray that you may strengthen our resolve that no matter what comes, we will hold fast to you and your word. 
to those who are yet to be a part of your family. They're preparing for baptism today. They're in that little valley where they're trying to decide what to do. We pray that your Holy Spirit will threaten them and help them to recognize that there's nothing greater to hold on to than you. This world has nothing to offer. So we pray your Holy Spirit will indeed touch and uh, revive uh, and lead uh, and guide us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. And once again, Heavenly Father, bless the speaker, bless all those who will participate in the service, and we pray that as you use individuals, that Lord, they will not be seen, but you will be seen and glorified. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Happy Sabbath, my brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Have no fear. Jesus Christ is here at this great hallelujah square. You should have no gray here because we are all here to steer. We are delighted to welcome you to the Countdown to the End evangelistic series. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, you look good. There are two reasons for this. Number one, Christ has redeemed you. Number two, my good looks have rubbed off on you. Amen, amen, amen. And so we want to say welcome to everyone who is here. We welcome the 10 churches that are involved in this wonderful evangelistic campaign. I'm talking about Brayton. I'm talking about the Deaf Church. I'm talking about Gregory Park, Waterford. I'm talking about Hellshire, Greater Portmore and Clifton. Can I hear you say amen for them? I'm talking about Portmore. I'm talking about Tent City and Newland, some of the Adventist Church. Can I hear you say amen for them? We want to welcome those who are watching from Canada, those who are watching from the Bahamas, those who are watching from the Cayman Islands, from the Ebenezer Seventh day Adventist Church. That's the church, our evangelist pastors. We say welcome to them. From the British Virgin Islands, from the Turks and Caicos Islands, from Florida, from New York, all across the United States of America, from UK, from Kenya, we say a special word of welcome. You're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome again in Jesus Christ. Those who are on my far right, can I hear you say glory, hallelujah. Those who are in the middle, can I hear you say praise the Lord. Those who are on this side, can I hear you shout, thank you, Jesus. Those who are on my far left, can I hear you say, amen. amen. Over on this side, C plus. Over here, so B plus. This side, B minus. And over on this side, A plus, 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 plus. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, we're delighted. We're happy that you are here worshiping with us today. I want to say a big shout out to Jacqueline Campbell and Opal Morant, who are on the YouTube line right now, the YouTube channel. They are actively engaged in the chat. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Remember to bring out tomorrow evening Brother Barry, Sister Sally, Uncle Larry, Tell them do not tarry because we don't want anyone to be sorry. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath and keep sweet in Jesus. Amen. That was Pastor Barrington McLean. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, that sounds so unlike you. Let's do it again. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy in the Lord this morning? Yeah. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. Let me see you wave your hands and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. It's good to be here. I'm happy to see you here again today. 
And those of you who join us online, the CJC Online Church, you have been with us since the start of this evangelistic series. We are happy to have you. And we know that there's a blessing in store for you today. You got to invite your family members and your friends everywhere to come and be a part of Countdown to the End evangelistic series. Today is a big day. What do you say? And the Lord is going to work a miracle here under this Canvas Cathedral uh, this morning. I want to take this opportunity to recognize uh, some individuals that are here earlier on. Uh, well, last night, uh, the, the wife of uh, evangelist, uh, Sister O'Connor, uh, was welcomed and recognized. And she's here again, along with the wife of uh, or Bible worker Joshua, they're here. I just want to add my code of welcome to you, and we're happy to have you joining us here again at the Countdown to the End Evangelistic Series. Now, our evangelist has been doing a wonderful job. What do you say? The Lord has been using him in a marked way as he delivered God's word with clarity and conviction. Oh, yes, we have learned so much. As a result of this man of God, I want to say thanks to you, uh, Dr. O'Connor, for having loaned your dear uh, husband to us. I want to recognize the presence of uh, Pastor Roy Dennis, Dr. Roy Dennis, the Family Life Director, Family Life Director, as well as Storeship Director of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And you will hear from him in a little while. We're happy to have you, Dr. Dennis. He had just finished a, a series in the Turks and Caicos, and he had baptized over 20 precious souls. I've been one for the kingdom of God. Amen, somebody? But he's here today, and I want you to know that in short order, he will be leading out an evangelistic series there in Mandeville. He's a man who is passionate about the mission. What do you say? And we're happy for Dr. Roy Dennis. Also, in a little bit, I will invite the... MP, a member of parliament, uh, Mr. Robert Miller, as uh, the MP for Southeast uh, St. Catherine, uh, to come and bring a word of greeting. You know, he is uh, one of us, a uh, member, one of the elders of our church, and we're happy to have him. And we welcome you, sir, uh, to the countdown to the end evangelistic series. I invite you to say a word to the brethren. Thank you, my president. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's indeed a great privilege and pleasure for me to be here worshiping this Sabbath day. I told Pastor a short while ago that when I won my election in 2020, it was a different feeling than when I gave my life to Christ in 1988. That feeling is something that I look forward towards when you give your life to Christ. So as we continue to count down to the end, let us invite our neighbors. Let us live a godly life. Let us continue to praise his name because everything, Mr. President, that I've owned in this life and where I've reached, I've gave it to the glory and honor of God. I can see a good friend of mine who is giving his life to Christ. One of my key worker, political worker, she's baptizing today. And spread the word of his coming again and tell someone about the love of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Put your hands together for uh, Mr. Miller. We really appreciate your coming and taking time to share with us today. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, the, the series is on in, in earnest. You will agree we have come to the end of something there as best, right? All right, so the best is yet to come. We have the final week, amen? And uh, listen, I believe, my brothers and sisters, that our lives will never be the same again as a result of this series. None of us, whether we have come to this Canvas Cathedral every night or some other night, or we watch online, our lives will never be the same again as a result of this evangelistic series. And we thank God for the moving of the Holy Spirit. What do you say? Yeah. Now, today we will be having our baptismal service, as you know. Uh, we want to start our program, uh, put the preacher on in short order, so we can get through the service here and get through our baptismal service also uh, today. And uh, we're going to ask that you work with us, cooperate with us. 
Because so often when we get there, we, 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 we have some challenges getting in on the, on, the, on the beach and so forth. But we're going to ask that you follow the instruction that will be given at the appropriate time. And we will be back in the afternoon right here. So those of you who may not necessarily go to the seaside, you can stay here because we'll be having a Q&A section of talk priorities at 3 and then we will follow with talk priorities at 3.30. And we'll be focusing on the gift of prophecy. Uh, quite an interesting subject that you cannot afford to miss. Of course, uh, Dr. Douglas will be joining us along with uh, Pastor Damien Chambers, Associate uh, Professor, Department of Religion and Theology at Northern Caribbean University. You can't afford to miss that this afternoon. Now, I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, as we are now in the, the, the end of the third week and preparing for the final week of the series, that you remember your commitment. Those of you who have made your financial commitment to the series, and those of you who have not yet done so, we are waiting your contribution, your participation, as we enter the final uh, phase, our week of this series. We need your support where this program is concerned. Now, tomorrow, we'll be having a health expo. Tomorrow at 9.30, right here at the tent side. We're looking forward to seeing you come out and, and get your medical attention. That's so crucial, and it's free of cost. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, morning at 9.30. And uh, finally, uh, we're asking the management team to meet with us this afternoon at 6.30. That's the management team for the crusade. You meet with us this afternoon at 6.30. My brothers and sisters, I just want to encourage you. And those of you who would have signed up already to surrender your life to the Lord, because you came to this tent or you watch online and the Spirit of God worked through your heart. And you got to that point of conviction. You know, uh, and, and when you leave, you may have left here or you made up your mind and then a day passes and the devil said, listen, don't bother with it. That's, that's just a devil way of trying to mesmerize you and confuse you, my brothers. He says, when the Spirit of God leads and directs our lives, we need to cry out unto God. What do you say? And I believe that somebody's going to get the victory today. What do you say, somebody? And so let's stay focused and let's pray for our brothers and sisters who are in the valley of decision, trying to make the decision that today will be their breakthrough. May God bless you and have a pleasant Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath, church. Do you believe that where we are is holy ground? Yes. We are in His presence on holy ground. I invite you to sing along with us. We begin with, this is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here and where He is, His holy. Amen. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is here, and where He is, is holy. 
Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. No man, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. God is good and all the time. Certainly, we can say that God has been a good God. And today, brothers and sisters, is the penultimate Sabbath. We know next Sabbath will be the final Sabbath. And as such, we want when we close this series, we are debt free. Isn't that a good thing? 
And so, brothers and sisters, I want to make this very special appeal at this time that you will be very deliberate and intentional in your giving because this is God's work and it is never wrong to invest in God's business. What do you say? The church is governed by what we call the trilogy of books, the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the church manual. And I just want to read this quotation from the book Testimonies for the Church, volume 3, page 393. Ellen White posits, she says, The Lord requires gifts to be made at stated times, being so arranged that giving will become a habit and benevolence be felt to be a Christian duty. The heart opened by one gift is not to have time to become selfishly cold and to close before the next is bestowed. She says the stream is to be continually flowing, thus keeping open the channel by acts of benevolence. So don't you say because you have been giving, you will stop. She says that the gift should be continuous. And so I say to each and every one, as we know, five districts converging under this tent. So ensure that you label the tithe envelope and also your pledges with the correct name of the church so that everything can be accounted for. I can see that the ushers are standing in their respective places, so let us now assume an attitude of prayer. Eternal Father, we are truly thankful for this, your holy Sabbath. We thank you, O God, for what you have blessed us with. We pray now as we collect same that it will go to the announcement of your work. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stood on the bank of a wide raging river Trusting that I'd get across And I've made my way through some valleys and deserts Thinking I'd never get lost I stood at the foot of what felt like Mount Everest Knowing I'd have the strength for the climb it's through every trial, each test and temptation There's one thing that's sure every time Over and over, again and again, God is faithful oh, oh, Over and over, again and again, through it all He's made me able Stand and survive To come through alive When it sure looks like I could win Jesus is with me So I'll claim the victory Over and over again Do I have a witness under this thing today? Oh If you ask me why I have no hesitation God does what He says He will do And I'd simply say that each battle has taught me There's nothing He won't help me through So why should I dwell on the hardships and struggles When I look just beyond them I see the way this will end is with great celebration Over again and again God is faithful oh, oh, oh. Over and over again and again through it all He's made me able to stand and survive To come through alive when it sure looks like I could win Jesus is with me, so I'll claim the victory over and over again. To stand and survive, to come through alive when it sure looks like I could win. Jesus is with me. 
with me So I'll claim the victory Jesus. The music has been rich, Daniel. Yes, it has been. It has been. And we're counting up with some baptisms. Yes, we Certainly are. Certainly not counting down. And I think in terms of baptisms, we have close to 100 persons who've been baptized so far. Over. Amen, church? Yes. They're over? Over, yes. Over. Our congregation right. is saying, praise the Lord. And we're expecting more yes. in Portmore. Praise the Lord. We're asking Bridget Stewart and Leon Anderson to join the deaconesses at the back, talking about counting up for baptisms. Congratulations, Bridget Stewart and Leon Anderson. You know, it's time to hear the Word of God. Yes. And night after night, Sabbath after Sabbath, for the last three weeks, we have been blessed Amen. by someone I will call a firebrand for Christ. Yes, <laughs> Dr. Shion O'Connor. Yes, indeed. You know, it is Adventist Christian Education Sabbath today. Oh, yes. It is, and Dr. Shai has been teaching. Praise the Lord. I just love that about Dr. Shai. Can you Shai. attest to the fact that when you listen to the sermons, it's like you're in a classroom? Amen, amen, amen. So we want to welcome our pastor and teacher, Daniel, our counselor and author, husband and father. Sister O'Connor is here. Praise the Lord and welcome, Sister O'Connor. God has been using our man of God to bless us these past marvelous three weeks. But just before yes. he comes, we're, we want to warmly welcome do by, you know his name? By Pastor Roy Dennis <laughs> yes. from the Jamaica Union Conference. He'll be giving some greetings, after which he'll do a special prayer. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. This is the place to be. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the place. <laughs> this is the place. Touch your neighbor on the next side. Say, this is the place. <laughs> there is, this is the center of the universe. There is no place like this place. Anywhere near this place, this is the place. What do you say? Amen. We are grateful for the power pack preaching that we have been receiving. And I, I, I had to come by today. I was in Dr. O'Connor's territory over there in the Turks and Caicos Island in that union. And, uh, and uh, so I was away. I did not have the opportunity to come. But as soon as I got the opportunity, I said I had to be here because this is the center of the universe. And so I just want to, before I lift up the man of God, before uh, the preaching of the gospel, I want to bring you greetings on behalf of the Jamaica Union Conference. Tent evangelism is alive and well. What do you say? Uh, when, we, when my wife and I came to Portmore this year, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, and the work was strong in Portmore, but we can say, praise the Lord, it is stronger now. Amen. We had a massive evangelistic campaign nearby here, but this one is even bigger. It is saying that the work is growing. What do you say? So the Jamaica Union Conference is excited about what is happening here in Portmore, and I want to bring you greetings on behalf of our president, Pastor Everett Brown, on behalf of Pastor Levi Johnson, the executive secretary, uh, Dr. Adlai Blight, the treasurer, Dr. Joseph Smith, vice president, and all the members of the team at Jamaica Union Conference. I bring you greetings also on behalf of my wife, Keisha, and our family. And we are praying for the success of the program. What do you say? We thank you for your support this year the program that we are emphasizing is all the family in mission. And we are asking every family member to bring in the church to bring one to Christ this year. So we are expecting you to prepare one for this campaign. What do you say? Every Seventh-day Adventist to work with one person for the kingdom of God. All the families in mission. We are serious about the finishing of the work. And we look forward to the day 
when the work will be finished and Jesus will come. Do you want Jesus to come? Yes. And so this is our goal for the finishing of the work and for Jesus to come for his faithful children. Let us continue to be faithful. Let us do our part for the success of this program. I'm going to invite you at this time to stand with me as we offer prayer on behalf of the man of God. Let us pray. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, helper amidst the floods of mortal hills prevailing, gracious, loving Heavenly Father. We give you thanks today for the privilege to be in your presence. We are grateful for the opportunity to be alive and well. Lord, we are grateful for those who are able to come into worship here under these tents and also those who are online. Once more, your word is about to be imparted. And are we not grateful for the marvelous way in which you have been using your manservant? Today, we lift him up before you again. We pray that Dr. Cheyenne O'Connor will not be seen but that Jesus Christ will be lifted up once more. That his name will be glorified and magnified in this place. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will cover him under the shadow of your almighty wings. We pray that you will take a life call from the altar and that you will touch his lips, that the word that will be imparted will draw men and women, boys and girls, from sin to Calvary's pleading, cleansing cross. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak to Dr. O'Connor and through him to every heart represented here today. We lift up our cups before you and we pray that you will fill us up to the brim today and to the overflowing. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as Dr. O'Connor does your business in this program, that you will take care of his business. His wife is here. We pray that you will bless their family, that you will place an edge around them, that you will beat back the forces of evil, that you will fly every trap that the enemy might set against them in the precious name of Jesus. Oh God, we place your servant before you again. We are opening up our hearts to receive from you. Speak now, Lord, because we believe that it is your word. We believe that this is your program. Lord, we pray that at the end of these meetings, that all in Portmore who would love to receive Jesus, they would have received the opportunity and that they will give their hearts to you before it's eternally too late. We thank you for those who are already baptized and for those who are being prepared today. And we pray that as the word is being imparted today, for some it might be considered foolishness, but we know those of us who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. And so as the word is being imparted once more, I pray that it will cut sin from our lives. I pray that souls will yield to the call of Jesus and that many more will come to know Jesus, whom to know is life everlasting. Open your words to our hearts, to our minds, to our understanding. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's, isn't it so great to be back here again? Amen. Yeah, I look forward for this morning. We want to add my quote of welcome to all of you who have decided to journey from all parts of this beautiful island of Jamaica to be here in the sunshine parish of Portmore. Amen. Oh, you didn't like that. The sunshine parish. <laughs> I understand that you're trying to make Portmore into a parish yeah all right whatever <laughs> whatever but we are grateful to God for what he has done so far were you blessed last night yes, yes. is it okay to be 
That's why we would help you last night and we hope and trust that the Lord spoke to your heart. I want to welcome all who have decided to give their hearts to the Lord in baptism this morning. Can the church give them a round of applause? Yes, tremendous. They have decided to commit their hearts to the Lord and we give God thanks and praise for them. I want to welcome a number of individuals who come all the way from Negril and from West Jamaica Conference coming up to support us in this campaign. We are delighted to have them and we just pray God's blessing on them. For those of you watching online, wherever you're watching from, we're grateful to have you. Um, every time we meet here, we will never overlook the hundreds of you that are thousands of you uh, that are watching online. May the Lord bless you real good as we worship together here. I know it's a little hot under the tent and we hope that the Lord will send a cool breeze to cool down the temperature. Amen. We know he can, so we're going to ask him to do that just to cool down the temperature in this place. All right, just want to get some housekeeping matters in place. Number one. So we're about uh, tomorrow evening when you come. We're starting our final week for this campaign. Uh... You know the song, it's crying time again. <laughs> you know that song? Yeah. Yes. I can see the faraway look in your eyes. <laughs> so, this, this is our, <laughs> we're going in our final week this week. And um, maybe it's appropriate just to say it at this time. Um, I, if you have been, were you blessed by the last three weeks? Yes. Amen. If you have been blessed by the last three weeks, then I would, maybe it's appropriate for me to say, this, 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 this effort that the Central Jamaica Conference has put on is a massive effort. And it's really, re I must commend them for the investment they make in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, I mean, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. It costs quite a lot. And so I would love to use this opportunity to invite all of you who are here and those of you watching online um, to help us defray whatever costs we have left back for the last week. Is that all right? Yes, yes, yes. So we want you. You can't preach like Paul and you can't sing like Angel, but you can do something to spread the gospel. Amen. Good. So what we want you to do, come tomorrow evening and the rest of the evening, we'd love for you to bring a very special offering to God to say, Lord, this is my contribution to keep the gospel going. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. And those of you online, I'm, 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 I think the tech team may be putting the, um, the, the information online. I don't see it on my screen, if they could do that, um, where you can make your direct Deposit, um, we love you. Here it goes on the screen. Um, if you can go and write it down, make your direct deposit for those of you who like to do that. And um, we, take, we take all currencies. Amen. US, UK, what else? Huh? <laughs> Canadian. Jamaican, Cayman, yeah, 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 all those strong currencies, we take all of them, amen? We take one cent, ten cent dollar. Doesn't matter, <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. Is that all right? Yes. So we want you to go ahead and um, this is your commitment to the Lord. Lord, I can do some of the things that others do, but this little bit I can do and I will do to the honor and the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So we want to, starting tomorrow night when you come, those of you under the tent, bring that, bring tomorrow night or on Tuesday night or on Wednesday night, make a special effort and we want to see that so that we can leave here rejoicing. All right. Thank you so much. Just want to be aware, aware of that. Okay, let me tell you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. If the, if the guys can put my stuff on the screen, here we go. So this is the final week coming your way. We, we put it one notch higher. And Sunday evening, tomorrow evening when you come, this powerful presentation, just one verse away in your Bible. There's one, I'm going to bring, I'm going to prove it from, from the Word of God to show you just how close Jesus Christ is to the second coming. How close? One dege verse away. 
And it's in your Bible. Tomorrow night, wherever you do, make sure you're here. Don't miss it. And then on Monday night, I'm going to show you the very last sign. If you see that, that's the curtain drawer, right? The drawing of the curtain. That's it, the very last sign. And um, that one going to shock you. Then on Tuesday night, why heaven gets silent? I peep in the Bible and I notice that, there, that there's a record that heaven was silent for 30 minutes. And I got inquisitive to find out what on God's earth could cause God's heaven to be silent for, for half an hour. What going on up there? That's going to be on Tuesday night. It's all in your Bible. And then on Wednesday night, big presentation, spot check at the pearly gates. Oh, Lord, help us. If when you're going through, you hear beep, beep. Spot check at the pearly gates. And then on Thursday night, no meeting. But on Friday night, Friday night when you're coming, Friday night is family night. So here is the concoction for Friday night. Are you ready for it? Friday night, sex, savior, and salvation. Yep, all mixed up on Friday night right here. Don't miss it. And then we draw the curtains down next week, Saturday morning, with this powerful presentation. When the king comes in. When the king comes in. May the Lord bless you real good. You want another week? Me never hear uno. Stand for me. Stand for me. We're going to sing our theme song. Good to see my sister Nadine and I think Lita and maybe here. Good to see you, Nadine. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Let's stand as we sing Holy Words, Long Preserve. Holy Words. Long Preserve.
Father, your people have gathered from the east and the west, north and the south, united to join with Jesus as guests in this place today. Lord, I am asking you to speak to your people all by yourself. This church is not mine, it's yours. So God, remove me and let the people see you and hear you and respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now there's a lady in the community, you don't know her, Nadine. Come. Yeah, you don't know her. She's in this community a long time. Yeah. She's in this community a long time. You don't know her. You're gonna know her now. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna know her now. You're gonna know her now. So they they don't know. They they don't they don't know this stuff. But this young lady and I baptized the same day. Come from the same yard. How many of you know Pastor Glenn Samuels? Yeah, yeah. Pastor Glenn Samuels is the one who baptized both of us in St. Elizabeth. One yard full of picnic. And he baptized every picnic in the yard, <laughs> including your humble servant, Anne Nadine. She's, his, she's an inspector here at the 100 man police station. 35 years in the Jamaica, 34 years in the police services here in the Jamaica. Can the church say amen? amen. And remain a servant of the Lord. My sis, thank God bless you. Take care of her for me. We eat out of the same pot, live in the same house, baptize the same day, and going to the same place when the Lord comes. Yeah. Amen, amen. And I think Leeton was around here. I don't see Leeton, but there are others. Some of the sisters may be watching online, wherever you are. We welcome you this morning. So, Every time I'm supposed to speak for the Lord on this subject, I struggle. I struggle. Because I, I, and, and I, I felt it last week before I preach, and I'm, I'm feeling it again, Sister Carly. I'm feeling it again. I am struggling with my church. I am struggling with my church because the longer I spend in the Word of God is the more I'm, I come out struggling with my church because I, I am not yet convinced that the church has a good understanding of God's grace. I, I, I am struggling, I'm really struggling that, that our church still have not yet grasped the full impact of God's Grace. Is the church with me? Yes, sir. Tell you, I'm telling you where I'm going. I'm telling you where I'm going. Um, are you aware? Are you aware that Jesus died? That Jesus was murdered? That Jesus was crucified because of the church? Oh, you still get it. Are you aware that it is not Roman soldiers who killed Jesus? That it was his own church? 
Are you aware, are you aware that Pilate wanted to save him? And says, why are we killing this man? And the church leaders, <laughs> it was the church leaders, say, if you don't kill him, you are not Caesar's friend. We want him dead. Are you aware that the problem Jesus had in his ministry was not on the, with the man on the street, but with the church? Are you aware, are, let me talk to the choir. Are you aware that a good for nothing thief on the cross was able to detect that the man dying beside him was the son of God and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. But the chief priest down at the foot of the cross, who is the leader of the church, said, if you are. And you ask the question, how come the leadership of the church don't know that the man on the cross is a son of God, but a crook? How do you explain that? How do you explain it the pro the biggest problem jesus had was with the church ah oh, lord help us help us help us <laughs> help us um, um, hear me hear me judas betrayed him church member amen yeah simon questioned him this man could never be a prophet because if he were a prophet, he would have known, help me preach, last week's sermon, he would have known what kind of woman touched. So he really couldn't come from heaven. He can't be God. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 he can't be God. And the chief priests, scribes, and elders refused to accept him. They, they, hey, they question every single thing about Jesus. They question his birth. Hey, this half ages, servant of the Lord says, they even question his birth. That he was born under questionable circumstances. This woman all of a sudden talk about she got pregnant and never knew a man. Ha! They question that his birth is illegitimate. illegitimate. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 the question is birthday. Even the very place where he grew up in Nazareth, the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Everything about Jesus, they question everything. The reason why they killed Jesus is because in their mind, he didn't fit the profile of who God's supposed to be. Is the church with me? And that is dangerous because there are some folks who have a profile of what the church should look like and who the church should accept and who should lead and who should participate and who should be at the front seat and who should be at the back seat. They have a profile. And if the profile is warped, we're in trouble. So, hey, 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 hey. And, and because, because Jesus didn't fit the profile, I don't know where they get the profile, but in their mind, they ha hammer out a profile, an image of what God's supposed to look like. And when this man come and say, I'm the bread from heaven, <laughs> I am that I am, it really didn't match up with the profile that they had. Is the church with me? So now I'm going to tell you, get rid of the profile you have in your mind. Clear it out. Clear it out. Clear it out. Because God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You can't put God in a box. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, you can't set a standard for God. God is above all standard. God is God all by himself. Are you with me? God says, I can curse who I want, curse and bless who I want, bless. I'm still God. Yeah. 
You know what they told me? I'm not criticizing my Sabbath school teacher. But they told me in church growing up, Jesus only used people who are willing. What? Have you guys ever heard that? Yeah, only willing, Jesus only used, God only used willing people. What? Who told you that? Because when I read for myself, not a single one of them was willing. Moses, no Lord, I am st 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 stammer. You can't use me. Jeremiah, no Lord, I am too young. Isaiah says, no Lord, I have a filthy lip. Jonah, run away. Not, not a single one was willing. That's why I tell you, stop listening to church people and read Bible for yourself. So, 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 so this morning, for the next few minutes that they have assigned to me, I really want to use a story in the Bible to illustrate what God's church ought to look like. Amen? Yeah, yeah. What's God's church all to look like? Fantastic stuff. The, the story is set against a background. The reason, most of you may have heard about the prodigal son, yes? The reason, but most of you perhaps don't even know why Jesus told that story. So here's the reason why he's told the story. Because the reason why he's told the story is even more important than the story itself. So I'm in Luke 15. And verse 1. The text says, then, let's read together. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to hear him. Could you near to him to hear him? Yep. So right away, we have a <laughs> we have a gathering of tax. You remember who I told you these guys are? For those of you who didn't know, I'll give you a little background. Tax collectors. Now in Jamaica, they're not too bad. But, <laughs> but, but in Jesus' days, stay with me. You, you got to get this. You ready for this? In Jesus' days, Jerusalem was controlled by a foreign power. Rome. Is you church with me? The Jews were controlled by Rome. When Rome conquered Jerusalem, conquered the Jews, Rome decided to charge them high taxes. So now the Jewish people have to pay taxes to this foreign government that is oppressing them. Is the church with me? They put up a resistance against it. So what the Romans did, rather than using their own people to collect the taxes from the Jews, they appoint some of the Jews themselves to collect taxes from among their own people and pay over to them. Is the church with me? Now the Jewish people turn against these Jewish tax collectors and say, the whole of you are traitors. Because you're not supposed to collect tax for your brethren to pay no foreign people. Are you with me? So they, they now consider these tax collectors as the worst of the worst of the worst. Is the church with me? Yes, scumbags, scumbags. The sinners we discussed last week. Anybody remember who they are? Oh, you don't remember? The sinner, and the Bible, and you designated a sinner in the Bible. And you see, and the sinners, the sinners is a name, is a designation given to women particularly who are in prostitution. Are we together? That's why last week's story, they designate Mary the sinner. Good. So, so watch me now. So in the Jewish mind, the, hey, 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 the two worst set of people, somebody preaching with me, the two worst set of people you could ever find are tax collectors and sinners, betrayers and prostitutes. Are we together? Good, now, if you understand that, then you will understand the background of the story. So the Bible says, then, then all, see the word all? See the word all? Then all the tax collectors and sinners 
these scumbags of society, <laughs> the Bible says, they drew near to Jesus to hear Jesus. Any problem with that? At least the, the church should not have any problem with that. Am I right? Yes, because Jesus is the Savior. And these people are sinners. And what the church should want is sinners drawing near to this. Come on, help me, man. What the church should want is sinners drawing near to Savior. Good, 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 good. Now, let's the next verse. The Bible says, and the Pharisees and the scribes. Scribes are like the church clerk. <laughs> the Pharisees are like the elders. The leadership of the church, the Pharisees and the scribes, when they saw so many stack collectors and sinners flocking around Jesus, always being Jesus' company, the Bible said they what? Complain. And you have to ask the question, what are you complaining about? Amen. If sinners are drawing close to Jesus, shouldn't that be what the church want? Then what's the complaint? They co what's the complaint? Saying, this man receives <laughs> receive sinners and eat with them. Mm. Mm. Which means, if he were God, God don't eat with... God don't eat with sinners. And, hey, hey, hey. And, and God don't receive sinners. You see, that's their concept of God and them running church. And by the way, that's not the first time when Matthew, this is where the big problem, when Jesus called Matthew, he nearly mashed up the whole thing. Here's why. In, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, Jesus passed from here and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. So Matthew, Matthew was a tax collector. Is he with me? Guy was at work. Yes? And the Bible says, and he said to Matthew, he says, follow me. So he arose and leave his calculator, leave his pad, leave everything, leave everything and follow Jesus. Mm, this tax collector. Is the church with me? Good. And if you read Ellen White, the stuff on that Desire for Ages, uh, he was so impressed with Jesus and was so grateful that even though the rest of the Jewish people criticized him and say all manner of things about him, this rabbi came by and recognized him. He dropped whatever he was doing and he followed Jesus. Is the church with me? Now it happened, verse 10, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, watch me, so, so, you get the back row. So Matthew was so grateful that Jesus chose him to be part of his disciples. In fact, his disciple number five, is the church still with me? That Matthew decided to keep a little reception to give Jesus thanks for choosing him to be a disciple. Is the church still with me? Good. So at that reception, guess who will be coming? All his co-workers. <laughs> who are his co-workers? Tax collectors. Yes, 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 yes. So, so the Bible said Jesus sat at table in the house. That be, and behold, many of his co-workers came out. Amen. And who else come? See now, these are bread and butter. Anyway, you see one, you see the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, many. So the house was filled with tax collectors and sinners. And listen, the last place the church want to see God. Hey, 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 hey. Because in their mind, God is too holy hey, hey, to be in that room filled with. So the Bible says that he came and sat down with him and his disciples. Verse 11. And when the, and when the Pharisees saw that this man who claimed to be God, this man who is a religious leader, this man who 